You can't build a real application these days without handling file uploads from your users. Whether it's a profile picture or a PDF resume, files are an essential part of successful applications. So let's see how to handle file uploads in Node.js using Express.js and Molter. All right, so I'm starting with a basic Node application. I've got a package.json. I have no packages installed yet, and I have an app.json file. So the two things we're going to need to install are Express as the framework, and then we'll need to install Molter, which allows us to handle multi-part form data. We'll talk about that more in a second. Now from here, I've got a little snippet for an Express app. And basically what this does is it requires Express, it creates the application, creates an endpoint, and then starts the server running at port 3000 or the default port on the environment variable if there is one. Now, in this case, I'm going to update this route, uh, or actually, we'll just create another one. We'll do an app.post route, and this will be a route that is slash API slash upload. So that's the path that the user will send or the application will send this request to. And then inside of here, we'll take the request and response objects and then do something with it. So we can respond back to say, uh, uploaded successfully. Nice. So that's just the API endpoint. We haven't actually done anything with Molter. But let's just test this out first. Let's do a node of app.js. And we can actually use nodemon to do this. So app.js. So this is running on port uh, 3000, which means we should be able to uh, actually have a typo in here. So this should log out the actual port. Don't know if people caught that. So the port variable. So now this should show on port 3000. But let's just test this out really quickly. So inside of the Postman extension, inside of VS Code, I've already got a request up to be able to send a request, a post request to slash API slash upload. And we can press send in here and this should come back with the upload successfully. So we're just able to see that this works. Now, the cool thing about the Postman extension is you can also send files along, which is really neat. So we'll see how to do that in a second as we test this. So let's just look into the Molter package. We'll need to uh, first import Molter and then basically configure it to configure an upload directory that we wanna save these files to. So we require Molter. And then we call uh, the Molter uh, function that we just got back and we pass it in a config object to say, we wanna upload these things to a destination, which is the folder of uploads. I don't know if this will create it our, by itself if we don't have it created already, but we can just test this out. So uh, this actually becomes really easy. What we do is now use uh, inside of Express middleware that then references this upload that we just configured and we call upload.single and single says it's one file and an avatar is the name of the file. So when we do an HTML form, I'm going to copy this. If we look up here, the name of this file in this form is avatar. And that's what we're going to name it inside of the middleware. So inside of our post endpoint, we can paste in this little snippet. And again, this is middleware, which means before we actually run our logic, Molter is going to run this logic and that's going to go into the form data, grab the avatar and then upload that to the uploads folder. So let's save this. Let's now go to, actually, let's just make this generic. Let's call this uh, file. And then let's go into our request. I've named it file here. And then I'm just gonna select a screenshot from a tweet that I sent out yesterday. And let's just try this and see if it works. So we'll send this request. It says upload successfully. It did create the uploads directory for us and it gave it kind of an arbitrary name. We could go and customize this if we want, but this should actually be the file that we're looking for. Now let's say we wanted to find more information about the file that was created. Let's respond back with JSON and we'll just say res.json and we'll reference rec.file. Now Molter is gonna update this file property on the request to actually be the thing that we care about. And let's put this, I guess that actually is an object so it should be okay to just uh, do directly. So let's just try this again and this should show us more information about that file that was created. So if we look inside of here, you can see we have the original file name, we have the encoding, the MIME type, the field name, the destination, the file name, et cetera. So we can grab information about this file if we need to. Now let's say we wanted to have better naming for these files to be a little closer to what we'd expect. Well, you can configure the storage property with Molter with a few more properties. So I think inside of here, we'll create the storage config and then we will use the storage config in the Molter configuration. So inside of here, we'll call this storage. So in this case, we have a function that defines where the destination is. In our example, we're just gonna keep this as slash uploads. And then we also have a function that defines how the file should be named. And this is doing some unique stuff with date.now and random numbers. 
we can actually, just to keep this really simple, just take the file.original name. Now you'll need to do some things to make sure that this is these are unique. So you may add on some additional details to this to make sure if you upload the same file twice, it doesn't conflict. But for now, this will work for us. So if we come back over to our uh, Postman request, we can send this again. And this should now upload that file right inside of the uploads directory and keep the same original name and the file extension. So you could take any combination of this and name these in any way that you want so they make sense for you. Now, one of the things you might be thinking is if I'm running a real server, I probably don't wanna just save all of these files right inside of my server. I might wanna upload them somewhere else. So one of the things that you could do is you can define the storage to be memory storage with Malter. And what that would do is give you access to that file through a buffer. And you can use that buffer to upload that file somewhere else to S3 or whatever it is that you want. Now there's actually better ways to do this, which is uploading files directly from the browser to wherever you wanna store them. I'll be working on some content soon using that with Zeta. So keep an eye out for more videos like this on the channel. But just know that probably what you're not going to want to do is just save these files directly to your server. You want to get you're going to want to get them somewhere else. But I think Malter is a great start of understanding how to handle file uploads and actually seeing them take place, which is really nice. And I'll have more content on how to do this more efficiently in the future. So if you're interested in finding more of the content that I create in the future, you can subscribe to my newsletter at jamesqquick.com newsletter. I send out weekly updates with things that are top of mind for me, content from my channel, my podcast, and then also content from the Learn, Build, Teach Discord community, which there's a link to that in the description below if you're also interested in joining. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time.